I'd like to welcome all of you to this first, uh, I'm going to call it a collegial discussion. And here with me is uh, are two of my colleagues, uh, Jessica Clarkson, who all of you have met before, uh, the TA for the Teaching and Learning Problem-Based Learning course, and my colleague from um, the Faculty of Education, uh, Professor, Associate Professor Francois Desjardins. Um, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the two questions that came forward in the tutorial sessions uh, this past week, and they are given in the discussion notes that you can see below. Um, so the, the two questions are, what are the differences between project-based and problem-based learning? And secondly, um, a discussion about authentic assessment and or performance-based assessment and how these are related to problem-based learning. So let's start in the first question. What are the differences as you see them uh, between project-based and problem-based learning? Anyone want to take this one up away to begin with? Um, to me, the immediate kind of difference between the two is the end base um, of the project-based or problem-based, where the outcome for the project-based is, is an essentially a product, something that you can physically or tangibly or mentally um, put together, whereas the problem-based is more focused on the process as opposed to the final outcome. do you want to respond to that? I would totally agree with that. Um, the only thing I might add to that, if you want, was the um, uh, the difference, one of the major differences, both both are, are let's face it, both are, 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 are student-centric kinds of pedagogy. Um, they're not necessarily student-driven, uh, because in both cases you either have a problem that is presented or a project that's presented to students, and the difference between the two is in the project that's being presented, the the uh, the problem is is uh, if you want is very clearly defined, and um, the even probably part of the solution, and the students are then uh, made to execute if you want the solution. Whereas in a problem-based learning, problems will tend to be ill-defined. One of the characteristics of of, the, of, of problem-based learning was the, the, always the idea that you present a context, and the problem has to be defined by the students, by the learners. Um, and the fact that they actually have to define the problem, so it, it's the difference between being presented with a problem or um, being presented with a context in which the, where the problem is, is, is to be defined, to be found. Therefore, you could have different groups of learners or different learners that would look at the same context and interpret and find different problems with it um, and that, that would be... Uh, uh, then be solved. So I, th I think it's just a matter of degree. Problem-based um, is less open than problem-based, um, and, and project-based is, is slightly more directed than problem-based. Project-based, you have a pretty good idea what you're going to end up with, whereas problem-based, you generally have very little idea as to what you're going to end up with. You also use the terminology student-centered versus student-driven. Can you differentiate between those two? Because I know that it, this has been the topic of some of the conversations that our students have been talking about as well. So the whole idea of they're trying to wrap their head around what would student-centered mean and what does that look like in terms of the power structures within a class. Um, and, and then when you throw in student-driven on top of that, now some of them probably won't know what you're, you're dealing with. So can you differentiate those a little bit? Um, student-centered versus uh, uh, content-centered, if you want. Student-centered is already, I think, a step in the right direction in the sense that the, the primary concerns of the pedagogical actions taken are the student rather than the content. Uh, so so student-centered would uh, could be interpreted that, that uh, everything that is being done is being done and, and the prime, uh, um, if you want, uh, uh, center of, of assessment is the student and not the content. A content-centered kind of pedagogy would be, has the content been covered? A student kind of pedagogy is, does the student actually have an idea of what the content was supposed to be? The difference with student-driven and student-centered is student-driven is the student is actually also the one that decides and that, that uh, um, directs what actions are going to be. So in a student-centered kind of pedagogy, the, the, the teacher still is the one in, the, in the, the, the driver's seat, is still the one that's directing the action, but um, he is very much um, uh, attentive to the student's needs. Whereas in a student-driven kind of pedagogy, 
The student is the one making decisions. I want to do this today. Okay, there's my whole curriculum of what I have to do, but I choose to do this today rather than this, and tomorrow I will choose to do that rather than that. It is not the, the choices are not driven by the teacher, but driven by the student. So that's the, the difference between, you know, centered, the, the student is the object, um, driven, the student is in the driver's seat. Thank you. And Jeff, I'm going to just point back to you. Um, how do you see the differentiation between project-based and problem-based uh, with respect to what Francois was just talking about, student-centric versus student-driven? Do you see any correlation between those, those sets of concepts? Um, I definitely think that problem-based learning is more so student-driven than student-centered. Um, as I kind of always want to go back to a game analogy, that if you were to start a game um, and you're not given any instructions, it's up to you to take the driver's seat, figure out what you want to do, figure out what you need to know, what tools you need to have in order to um, get to where you want to go. If you're looking at the project base, there is still a lot of student freedom. However, the instructor or the facilitator has presented a project in a sense. So there's some structure, I think, in the project phase because there is a desired outcome that needs to be fulfilled. Um, so it's, I think it's more student-centered than student-driven, but I do think that aspects of both student-centered and student-driven are apparent in project-based learning. Um, number two, so we're taking a look at the, the entire con conception of authentic assessment and or performance-based assessment, and perhaps they are related to each other, perhaps not, um, and then taking a look at how those uh, ideas are related to PBL, and we're going to be using the larger conception of PBL. I think we, we probably will like to agree on problem-based learning, um, because project-based learning is uh, just a, um, a subset, perhaps, of, of problem-based learning itself. So anyone want to take a, uh, a first stab at this? Um, so I think the main difference um, from my perspective between authentic assessment and performance-based assessment is looking at where the assessment is coming from. So the performance-based assessment would be on the, the student itself, um, what they are submitting, how they are performing. I don't like to define words with words, but I did. Um, where authentic assessment is looking at um, an assessment process based on real-life situations um, or scenarios and taking that into play. So to me, I think you could potentially have performance-based assessment that has authentic aspects to it, but I don't, I'm kind of stuck on that one still, whether you could have them reverse back in the same. There are two, okay, I put it, there are two descriptors of, there are two characteristics of assessment. Uh, assessment can be authentic or not, and um, performance-based assessment could be authentic or not, and authentic assessment could be performance-based or not. So they're, they're not mutually exclusive. They're totally two independent ways of looking at assessment. Um, the authenticity of assessment I think is an important factor, if you want, in the sense that um, as much as we want, as we strive to make learning relevant for the learner, if the learner does not see relevance in the task, they will tend to generally be less motivated, less interested, less driven. If you make the assessment authentic so that it is actually, you are actually assessing things that are relevant and that are realistic, Maybe not necessarily real, because sometimes you have to work in contrived uh, kinds of situations. But if the assessment is, is one that has some relationship to um, how the same task would be assessed in the quote unquote real world, um, then you are playing to the relevance of, of the task and therefore to the relevance of the assessment. And, and that is something we should always strive for. And in problem-based learning, where problem-based it almost by definition tends to want to be something that has some kind of realism to it, um, some kind of realistic relevance, um, then authentic assessment, problem-based learning, would be a natural fit in the sense that they both are striving towards that, the relevance piece, and they both is, uh, are kind of describing a characteristic of assessment and a characteristic of the learning activity. Um, that would be as realistic as possible and as relevant as possible. Now, as far as the performance base is concerned, um, 
in in a context of problem based learning, when where where the learner is is going through the motions of assessing a situation, deciding on the problem, uh, designing and looking for situation uh, solutions, and so on and so forth, um, then it is not so much about the solution that is to be found, but the process of how do they go about finding and solving the problem, and therefore a performance-based approach to the assessment would make it such that what we are looking for in assessment is not so much is the solution right or wrong, who cares? Um, what's important is was the process more likely um, to, to, to be successful? Was the process um, in actual fact well thought out? Was the process well designed? Um, and so on and so forth. So performance based is, is you're looking more at the, the process of learning, the process of solving the problem, the process of analyzing the situation, and and therefore it would focus then the learning on that process. It, the learning becomes learning how to learn, learning how to solve, not so much getting the right solution. If, if you're dealing with a problem based learning scenario uh, where the students are actually going through um, problem based learning processes um, as they define themselves, performance-based uh, assessment would be most appropriate um, for that particular scenario if you are looking at process as being the most important indicator of learning? Uh, the whole idea behind problem-based learning, when it originated at McMaster University like, close to 40 years ago, the whole idea was to take the, the, the medical student and instead of, of just simply loading them up with quote-unquote facts, and memorization of, 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 uh, of book knowledge, if you want, to really sort of like characterize this. Um, the whole idea was, okay, if they're supposed to become doctors and, and medical doctors and they're supposed to, to treat patients and they're supposed to be able to do diagnosis, well then let's get them starting to think like doctors from square one. So let's make the schooling, okay, exactly like the profession. So what they would do is, for example, is they would come up with these fictitious patients and say, okay, here is the, here, here is the, 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 the person that just walked into your, into the clinic, into your office, into the ER room, and here are the symptoms. Go. So it's not even, you know, you have to make the person better or you have to fix the, the, the uh, fix the problem, or whatever. It may be, well, you have to come up with a diagnosis at one point or another, or, or maybe pretend diagnosis. Maybe you have to come up with a whole set of, uh, decide on a set of tests to maybe eventually get a diagnosis. Maybe you have insufficient information, you need to go get more information. Maybe it's about, uh, it's, it's about uh, finding the cause. Maybe it's about finding the solution. Whatever. But there's not a clear set goal to begin with. It's here are the symptoms of a person walking into or being taken into. And the whole idea of, of that was, was to really put them in a, in a mode of thinking like medical doctors, which is what they were being, quote, unquote, trained for. So the idea of PBL, um, then it, 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 it goes right back to that. So it's the, 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 whether you go for, for, for performance-based assessment or, 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 or any kind of other, uh, other kind of assessment, the idea is, if you're approaching PBL as a way to, 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 to um, uh, I hate the word, to use the word train, but, but I'll use it anyway because I think it fits here, to train the learner to think like the specialist in the domain that he or she is studying, then it's not about just the content and the answers, but it's about the learning how to think and learning how to learn in that domain. If you are training to be a historian, then it's not just knowing histor historical facts that are important. It's how does a historian think? What is the fundamental basic epistemology of the domain? And that's where problem-based learning becomes interesting because problem-based learning and performance-based assessment, which are all about the process, fundamentally end up being about the knowing how to know that domain or the epistemology of that domain. Cut us off because we have... Uh uh, run out of time. Um, so thank you very much to uh, both of you. Um, I hope that this is going to be helpful uh, to the students who are wrestling with these problems, and we certainly will uh, come back to them uh, over time. So thank you again, um, and we'll see you next time.